I suppose the starting point for my presentation is really, um, there's been a lot of talk this morning about dots on maps, and that was very alien to us three years ago. We weren't aware there was groups of people like yourselves sitting in rooms all over the world talking about dots on maps. It wasn't of relevance to us. Um, so I'm really starting from the point of, let's assume you have all your dots everywhere you want them to be. So what are we going to do with these dots? And what uses are Fulch Ireland making of this type of information? Um, Compass have given me quite a grand title. So it's Tourism Scorecards and Data Analytics. And the science behind this um, is really something that Ali and Omer have already covered for you. And you've heard a good bit of it this morning. So I'm not going to go into any of the technical aspects. Uh, and I'm just going to pretty much bring you through the front end, what we're doing in Fulch Ireland with data and how we're using it to support our strategies. So just for any of you that aren't aware, our brief in Fulch Ireland is as National Tourism Development Authority. Um, and we're charged with providing a range of services and business supports um, across the industry to develop Ireland as a destination. Um, most of our business is B2B. Um, generally, if it's B2C, it's at domestic level, and we work very closely with our partners in Tourism Ireland, um, and they carry out the B2C in all of the overseas markets. So we get the product ready on the ground and support the businesses on the ground, and we package it, and they sell it, Tourism Ireland sell it for us in the overseas markets. And that's, that's the way we're structured at the moment. We have five uh, key strategic platforms. Um, four of which um, support the overall kind of overarching strategy that I'm uh, involved in, which is destination development. And this is destination development at a Ireland Inc level, as well as sub-destination development. So the, the um, presentation is going to cover four distinct areas. The four areas are spatial analysis, strategy development, visualizing tourism and scorecard development. We came to a situation um, back in 2009 where um, due to reducing resources, both human and budget, we had to develop a new strategy for Fulch Ireland. Uh, and in terms of developing that strategy, um, one of the areas that came out as key was to develop uh, the key uh, priority areas within the country where most of the tourism is. And it was at that point that we hooked up with uh, Compass to help us with some kind of science behind. While we had a good idea where the product was, we wanted uh, to apply some of the spatial analysis techniques to help us with that. So what we did was we took um, all of the tourism features and we used, I'll come back to it in a few minutes, we used our own database, which has about 13,000 tourism features in it, and we refer to it as the tourism content system. Um, it's all the cash register elements of tourism, so it's all the uh, hotels and the activity centres and the attractions, and we layered on top of that some um, external data sets, which are the non-cash register tourism features which would be things like the Blue Flag Beaches and the Green Coast and um, the scenic views and landscape data. Uh, so we layered that all on and what we came up with, with, which is what is in these two maps. So the maps progress, and I'm not going to go into the technical bit behind that, but uh, the map on the right here where you see the darker shades, this is where the density of product is uh, nationally in terms of tourism product. And when we looked at this, we said, gee, that's kind of clustering quite nicely. Uh, let's look at it a little bit further. So we came up with this map, which we found quite interesting. Uh, and this is totally related to the previous two. It's just the next progression in it. And when we looked at this and we were looking at our strategy, we discovered some very interesting facts. We discovered that 70% of the businesses that we do business with are within 30% of the landmass of Ireland. So in terms of how we operate it going forward, to be spreading our resources evenly across 100% of the landmass was not going to make much sense. Um, we also discovered that 
Um, these areas in this 30% account for about 70% of all accommodation. They account for about 78% of the hotel beds nationally. They account for about 80% of all large attractions and 60% of all attractions. By large attractions, we mean in excess of 25,000 visitors per annum. They also account for about 65% of all leisure activities. So in terms of aligning our resources um, to uh, cater for these clusters of uh, tourism businesses, um, we developed our destination development strategy. And the essence of that strategy is essentially to concentrate on the important tourism destinations and ensure that they're well positioned to take advantage of an upswing in international tourism. Um, once we had developed that strategy, we needed to put in place a number of tools to assist us in further developing it, but as well in terms of managing these des destinations in a, su a sustainable manner and also measuring um, the effectiveness of Fulch Ireland activities and tourism impact within both nationally and within these destinations. So we developed this uh, balanced scorecard model and um, we're using that at the moment. We've rolled it out at three levels. We've rolled it out nationally, we've rolled it out in the 10 destinations, and we've also rolled it out at uh, project level, and some of that I'll cover in a couple of minutes. The, within each of the scorecards, uh, and I don't want to frighten people, but there's about 900 indicators that we're measuring annually. So each scorecard has 90 things, pieces of information that we feel are important to measure um, tourism across the broad spectrum of all of the things we need to be concerned with when we're managing destinations and developing them in a sustainable man manner. Just to give you a flavour of some of them, we have seven groupings within the scorecard. Um, infrastructure, and the types of things we're looking at there are the rates of crime are, would be important for us in terms of development and management. Access, so where, what flights are available from where and in and out of what airports. Once people arrive, what, what are the links to the destinations and how are people going to get around these destinations. The tourism infrastructure, and that's covering things like where can I stay, what can I do when I'm there, what activities can I, can I do, and we, we're looking at things like, well there might be loads of things to do, but there's nowhere to stay, so we, there's a mismatch there and there's a development opportunity for us as an organisation. In terms of the visitor, it's really important for us to track the volume of visitors, uh, the views and the satisfaction levels of these visitors, and the value that these visitors are giving to the economy, both nationally and at sub-destination level. Um, that's useful in terms of um, getting funding from the EU and getting funding nationally from government for us to carry out the work that we're doing. The last four categories, uh, community, obviously community is an essential uh, part of any destination when it comes to tourism. Your first point of call is very, uh, of contact when you enter a destination is the community. So we need to see how switched on they are to tourism, what their views are and what their level of engagement is. Last year was the first year we did a community survey. We're a little bit afraid to do it, but when we got the results they were really informative and um, it was such a success to help us in terms of our planning and applying some of the supports we're giving that we've actually rolled it out this year uh, nationally and in all 10 destinations. And the results of that are due in in the next few weeks and hopefully we'll be in a position to put them on our website for everyone to see. All of the data we're collecting is available on our website. Um, we haven't necessarily broken it down into sub-destination level because it's not of relevance to everyone. Most people want to see it on a regional basis and it's all there. But if people want more, they can contact us then and we'll be able to provide additional data. Within the business area, we're looking at the enterprise profiles within destinations and that's all businesses. Uh, we're also looking at business performance, turnover and profitability, as well as the number of numbers employed and the level of engagement the businesses have with tourism. In terms of the environment, we're interested in looking at landscape protection and eco-labelling, and administration relates to the structures that are in place to manage tourism within the destinations. 
So obviously to populate all of those indicators, we need to have a very uh, large range of information. And there's about 120 different um, sources of information that feed into the scorecard. And I've just put them into three kind of groupings. Our own tourism content system, which has about 13,000 features in it. Um, the surveying that I've already mentioned, but a really important element is the third party data sets, because that gives us the non-cash register data that we really need to supplement our own cash register data with. And we're really looking to partnership um, any of you here that have valuable tourism data, please contact us and we're really anxious to work with people to build up our data sets and in particular the local authorities. Uh, while we've got some data from them, we're very interested in the scenic routes and views and if we can build that up nationally, we feel that would really help us with some of the projects that I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. Just in terms of how we're presenting the data, Omar and Ali presented this uh, the scorecard uh, dashboard and uh, this is the approach we're taking. Obviously we have this huge tome of information and we need to get people to engage with it but we need to put it in a format that's easily read. Like no one's going to read through 900 indicators to find out the one thing that they want to know in tourism. So we've had to come up with this idea and basically what this shows is all the indicators and their groupings are down the left hand side and then we can show how each of the destination fares in terms as a, a, against the national performance and also against each of their peers and we've used the median of all of the destinations to track that. If people want more detail on that we can talk about it afterwards. So we found this has been a very success, successful method of actually presenting the volume of data we have uh, and people can see very quickly they can go into the bits that they're interested in and pull them out and then if they want the background to them we can provide that. Uh, this is a little tool that we've developed that we've found really useful and it's called a time slider and it was referred to earlier on, I think Andy mentioned it this morning. And what we've done here is we've taken all the festivals and events and we've plotted them um, for a particular year so we can see the build up and we can stop it at any point in time and analyse it. And this is something that we would use for this type of area and we'd also use it in terms of our capital investment area to see the progression of our investments over any period of time. We found it a really useful tool um, and a really easy way of understanding um, certain data sets. Um, the last piece I just want to talk to you about um, is how we're using the data to visualise all of the tourism as assets and we've worked with Compass in developing a viewer and our one is called the tourism eye and the idea really was you're like the eye in the sky you can take the national perspective or you can zoom in down at lower levels in whichever way you want to, to, to look at the data. Um, you've seen a lot of these already this morning so I'm not going to spend too much time on it but what I would like to do is show you some of the little kind of cool what I think are the cool features that we have that maybe some of you don't have um, in our one <laughs> and you might like to get them. So essentially we're using the um, OSI base maps. Um, we're going with a light version at the moment until our organisation gets familiar with the whole package and gets used to using this type of software. We have three maps loaded up thanks to our colleagues in OSI. Uh, we have this base map, we have a grayscale base map which we found really useful in terms of analysing data. Some of the base maps can be a little bit busy so we try to simplify them with the grayscale which works and we also have a blank map so that we can see clusters of product around the country very easily. Um, the map, we're using the map Genie that was spoken about this morning and we're calling it in as a, as a real-time map uh, internet service and that's the way we're going with most of the data that we're calling into our mapping system because our mapping system shows um, not only Fulcher Ireland data, but also data from across a whole range of different agencies and bodies. So we're calling, if there's a map service we're calling it in, we're not hosting data or holding data within our own databases. So that means we have the benefit that we don't have to keep the data updated. It's on the onus of the uh, service provider to do that. So this one I just wanted to show you, it's all the activities just out and around Westport. This is on a grayscale map. 
And you can see um, down the left-hand side the subcategories that we have available to us. So they're quite detailed. So if I just wanted to know about cycling um, and nature and wildlife, I could just tick on those two and it would bring me into those and show me just those. This one, thanks to our friends in the NTO, is a data set of um, looped walks and waymarked ways. Um, and I've just put that again. It's good to see it on the grayscale map because uh, there's a lot of kind of lines involved and it works much better for us. This one I wanted to show you um, is um, using the identifier tool. Um, we've layered on the data set from um, the NTA. Um, it's something that we would use quite regularly in dealing with um, uh, preparing itineraries uh, to sell overseas to consumers. And what we can do here, and what this, this is showing you, that you can pick any of the transport nodes in the country, and I think Peter will correct me if I'm wrong, there's up to 100,000 transport nodes within this data set that are layered on here. So I just put, picked a bus stop in Dame Street. And up on the left-hand side here, uh, I can point it out here, there's a live link to the CIE bus timetable. So if I clicked on this and we were linked up, to the internet, I go into the bus timetable and see what time the next bus is at. So that's a huge advantage to us. Another feature of this in terms of um, where we're linking into other web services, we link into our own uh, tourism content system. And if I was in here auditing this area and I discovered that a data point was incorrect, I can click on a link that would be like this, this link here and it will bring me into our tourism content system. I can correct the point instantly and go back in here and continue on auditing um, the data. So we found that's kind of a really cool little tool for our content editors to use. This is just, we talked about earlier um, before lunch about the reporting functionality and you saw some of the Excel spreadsheets and we have that as well on this system. Um, you might not have seen this one and we use this a good bit in terms of presentations if we want to meet industry groupings and we're talking about certain products. Um, we can look at the map and go, yes, I'd like to show that to someone, I export it out into PDF and this is what it looks like. So it's a really handy, quick, couple of seconds, you know, you have your map produced for you and then you can use it if you want to put into publications or, you know, we might be doing some brochures or, or articles and magazines and you have your map produced, you're not having to go to a third party to, to do that for you. This is another use. I'm just going to finish up by mentioning a couple of the projects that we're using it on. Itinerary planning is really important to us in tourism, both in terms of um, dealing with all of the overseas me media that we host every year as an organisation and as well as putting up itineraries on the Discover Ireland website and also giving it to our partners in Tourism Ireland to sell overseas. So the tool gives us very quickly, we can, this is a preference, a journalist came in and they wanted to look at the important bird areas, national parks and do some walking. So we just click, 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 two minutes, produced this, gave the Excel spreadsheet and you know, they were happy that they had the data and they had their map. The last two slides really are covering and, and we've taken off so quickly in the organisation in terms of GIS spatial analysis and the mapping that now everything we do is based around it. And that's in a short period of time of just three years. Um, and there's four key projects um, that really within my own area of destination development I'd like to mention. The Wild Atlantic Way is a touring route we're developing on the west coast of Ireland. Um, the Tourism Towns is a new um, category of the Tidy Towns competition. The Dublin project is a route that we're developing uh, between Trinity College and Kilmainham and also we have a very interesting um, animation project which we're using to try and bring to life all our fantastic heritage and culture around um, the country. So those four projects, we're working on them at the moment. I hope I've whet your appetite to maybe log on to our website and uh, find out some more information. Loads of facts on there, all of the research is there, all the details about the project. We've recently, projects we've recently relaunched our website. So um, we'd love if, if you would like to uh, log on and maybe give some feedback on what you, what you find and what you see. Thank you.